beef fajita street tacos. I've got about three pounds of some beef skirt steak. The secret seasoning from the Fiesta brand is literally called fajita seasoning. It's a mixture of salt, pepper, garlic, onion powder, and um, some meat tenderizer. It's literally called fajita seasoning, guys. You can't go wrong. This is very, very good seasoning for some fajitas. Onion, some tomatoes, a couple limes, jalapeno, avocado, and some white corn tortillas. First things first with your beef skirt steak, you are gonna wanna flip her over and cut off all of this excess fat that you can. Um, you don't have to get like super detailed with it, but as much as you can. This knife sucks. What I've noticed is it's almost like a um, like you're cutting like a membrane off of some ribs. You're gonna wanna start to get it started and just kinda pull it and slice it. Again, my knife is probably the worst knife in North America, but we're gonna make it work here. I'll bet you my pocket knife is stronger than what I'm using right now. I'll bet you this does a lot better job for me. Oh, look at that. I need to get a knife that I can actually sharpen like my pocket knife because that one I have is cheeks. So these are pretty much good to go. We're gonna get us a little bit of lime juice here, use it as a binder and for some flavor. Now you can use fresh limes or you can cheat like I am or uh, pre-squeeze lime juice here. We're gonna put not too much just enough to get a binder on our fajitas here. Give it a nice rub, a nice tap 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 a -roo. Again, it literally just says Fiesta brand fajita seasoning. So, gonna give it a nice sprinkle, a nice coat on here. Now the salt, being as fine as it is, is gonna come out a lot easier than your pepper and your uh, early garlic is. So you're gonna wanna rotate your seasoner around every few uh every few drops here to make sure you're not only getting salt falling out so that's pretty good we're gonna flip her over same thing rinse and repeat lime juice and seasoning we're gonna give these a little fold put them in our bowl and put them in the fridge for about a half hour and then we will get our pico done in the meantime, and I am gonna wash my cutting board because we don't want any cross-contamination. <laughs> All right guys, now we're gonna make some pico de gallo. I don't really have quantities for you guys. It's just kind of an eyeball for me. Now I'm not a chef, so my cuts of my tomato is gonna be real sus. Probably won't need the full onion, but I'll just cut her in half. Get this little layer of skin off of there. All right, now I do have an onion chopper. I'm gonna bring it over here. I've never used it before. All right, here we go. Yoink. Onions, Yoink. onions, Yoink. get our onions in there. We're actually gonna use this for a jalapeno as well. Chop the jalapenos up. That's mostly where all your heat's gonna come from, are your seeds. But we're not worried about that. We're gonna chop some jalapenos in this chopper too. Onion chopper, how about a jalapeno chopper? <laughs> you know we're using it. Oh yeah. Put it in the rest with our pico. Mmm. Mmm. I could go a little bit. I could probably do the last tomato. We'll do the last tomato. Then our pico should be good to go. I always hate buying cilantro because I never use all of it, but we're gonna put a little bit of that in there as well. It's gonna give it a nice little taste. We don't need too much of that. It's very, very strong. Got our cilantro in there. Now you can put a little bit of salt in there as well. I just like to do that at the end of my tacos because you never know how high someone's salt tolerance is. So we got the pico in there. Mmm! Onion, tomatoes, jalapenos, and cilantro. So, 
Now that this is done, we're gonna put this in the fridge and get our meats out ready to cook. We're sitting at about 350, 375, so it is time to put these beef fajitas on the grill. Woo wee! A few minutes on each side, we'll know when they start to brown and sweat, it's time to flip them. So we'll give them about four or five minutes and then we'll check back in on them. It's been a few minutes, so let's see what we got here. Mm -hmm. You can see the pinkness is going away. They're not exactly starting to sweat yet on top. So a few more minutes and then we'll check on them again. Starting to sweat a little bit. I don't know if you can see that. I don't want to get my GoPro too far into my grill, but starting to sweat a little bit. We'll give it a little peek on the other side. You see that? That's what we want. A little bit of char, but we don't want overcooking. So that one's almost there. This one in the front um, is on the coolest side of the grill, so I might have to swap it out with the one in the back when I flip them. But we're going to figure it out, and then we're going to num 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 num. I'm going to swap these around real quick, guys. It's all about knowing your grill, guys. It's all about knowing your grill. This one's, this one actually, I'll give it another minute, and I'm going to flip it. Think about fajitas, guys, is they're never all going to be the same thickness. So I know that I'm going to flip this one already. So we're gonna do that for you now. See how we got some char? We got some nice brown color here. I hope you can see it on this GoPro. We got some nice char color here. Um, it's looking really good already. Ah, almost ready. So this one's gonna be done first, for sure. And it's all about trial and error. I said it with my steak video, you are never going to cook a good steak without cooking a bad steak. Or a good brisket without messing up a different brisket or really good fajitas or overcooking your fajitas you just have to try try to perfect it you're never gonna cook the same thing twice exactly the same way you did the first time so trial and error I like being outside I like cooking I like eating so trial and error guys you just gotta try it mmm very nice very very nice looking good guys looking real good let me show you what we got here. We're gonna let our fajitas rest like we did our steaks. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that color, that char. Mm. Let these rest for about five to 10 minutes. It's looking real nice. Now, the purpose of letting them rest is I want you guys to think of a sponge full of water. As you're cooking it, that heat is pushing out the water. So you're smushing your sponge down, okay? You're smushing your sponge down, losing all that moisture because the heat's pushing it out of the center of your meat. As you're letting it get cool, you're taking that pressure off of that sponge and it's soaking back up those juices to the center of the meat. So if we were to cut it right now, we would lose a lot of juice that we don't want to lose. So five to 10 minutes of while we're doing that, we can get our tortillas warmed up and ready to eat our tacos. Now I'm using some white corn tortillas. You guys can use flour, yellow corn, whatever you guys want to use. I'm gonna get me about three thrown down here on the, the grill I just used. You can cook these in oil if you want a little bit of a crisp. You can cook them on the stove, which I've done plenty of times. And um, we're just gonna heat them up a little bit and then we'll be ready for our fajitas. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm. So the idea, and you guys know, I'm gonna use my really big knife over here. Grain's going this way, so we're gonna cut Almost at a 45 with the grain here. Start cutting our fajitas. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> yes, I'm kind of cutting at an angle as well as I'm cutting through these. And I'll give you a really good representation of why we don't cut with the grain but against it. So, for example, we cut with the grain here. So, essentially, the grain is going this way. It's only going to tear down that way. So when you cut, tastes good. When you cut against the grain, as you can see here, the grain's going this way. It's just going to fall apart when you bite into it. That's why we cut against the grain, guys. Let's get our tortillas here. Mm. One, two, three. I'm going to put some meat in here. Oh yeah, here we go. Now I have a little bit of cheese. I am cheating. 
with my cheese. This is a pre-blended. I'm gonna put this in our meat. Just a little bit. Don't gotta be a lot. But don't be shy, guys. Don't be shy. Gonna get our pico that we made earlier. Some pico de gallo. Give her a little. Mmm. Looking good. Get some of this on there. Now we're gonna get a little bit of lime juice here. Fresh limes. Make sure we don't squirt the camera. Almost did. Don't wanna squirt myself. That's what she said. All right, we got the photo, guys. Thumbnail is good to go. So I was gonna show you guys how to make some fresh made salsa, but um, I decided um, to make that just its own separate video. So we got some New Mexico grown green chile salsa here. It should, it should just pinch right out. We can actually just give it a little scoop on there. Oh yeah, there we go. Now, I don't know if anyone taught you guys how to eat tacos. Let me see if I can. You're gonna want the juices from the one you're eating to drip into the next one you're about to eat. We don't want any wasted juice here. So I don't even know if I can fold this bad boy. We're gonna get a little pinch. Oh man, this looks great. And we're gonna dig in. Mm-hmm. All right guys, well, I haven't made street tacos like this in quite some time, so the only thing I would change right now is you can give these, cut them into chunks like so, and it'll be a little bit easier to eat. Other than that, that's 10 out of 10, baby. With that being said, liking the video is always appreciated. Subscribing is free. Just get out there and try stuff, guys, and y'all stay sweaty.